Greetings to you today. Thank you so much for all my partners, everyone that's going into this ministry all the time. Thank you so much. Thank you for blessing this ministry. Of course, you want to be careful of scammers writing you in your inbox. Make sure that you do not send money to them, but that you keep the ways that we have to give, which are three, Cash App, PayPal, and uh, P.O. Box. And all those details are on the cover page on Prophet Joshua Holmes. Uh, Cash App is dollar sign Prophet Joshua Holmes. PayPal is Prophet Holmes at AOL.com. And P.O. Box is P.O. Box 797-901, Dallas, Texas, 75379. And those details are on my page on Prophet Joshua Holmes' page. is on the banner, the home, the cover page. So make sure that you do not get scammed out of money. Make sure that you also do not get involved in uh, forbidden conversations with people that may pose like me. We have a lot of people doing that. So just be very careful. Um, now, there are a lot of rewards for serving your man of God. And there are anointings that God give you to serve your man of God better. Your two personal angels, when you come into the earth realm, they know who your man of God is before you. They know where the Holy Ghost is inside of a body to meet you and connect with you. So the beautiful thing about it is that from your birth, your two personal angels, they seek ways to reconnect you to your man of God. That's their whole agenda. Your two personal angels, when you come into this body, even if your parents are not saved, even if you don't come from a household that are um, into uh, worshiping and living out the word of God, these two personal angels are still with you. They know who your man of God is. They want to assist you in bringing you into the reunion with your man of God. There's a mystery to the king that God sends to your life because before you were in your physical body, you were with them. God duplicates himself through your man of God, then send them to the earth. So like, let me give you an example. Before John the Baptist came to the earth, everybody that he was assigned to and he convicted them of their sins and caused them to repent because he was filled with the Holy Ghost from his womb. These were people that were with John the Baptist before he came to earth. But when they got to earth, they got distracted by the world. Got distracted by the bodies that they had, the privileges they had to make decisions or do whatever they wanted. And so when they come to the earth, they get distracted and they start living lives of sin, disobedience, because they're serving sin, serving their flesh, serving their body. But see, that man of God will come and speak from the angle of the spirit. And it's to pull your spirit forth. Saints, do you know what happens when someone repent? Is that their spirit is brought forth and it overrides the flesh and the body that they were serving with their soul. So their spirit is now saying, I now recognize who I was before I took on this body. I came from God. God gave me my spirit. And now I come and take over. And that's where repentance starts. Because the person, the image of God is in their spirit. There is their spirit. And so now the, the, the image of God comes forth. And that person recognizes that the flesh has had dominion over their, their decisions. And now they relinquish that relationship with the flesh and they now take the initiative to be who they were before they entered into that flesh. Your personal angels know your man of God when you're five years old, six years old, 10 years old. They know who your man of God is. They watch your man of God and they long For you to get connectivity with your man of God, because that will mean that their ministry could officially start. Did you know 
that your two personal angels cannot officially move in their ministry until you get connected to your man of God. When your prophet, your king on earth comes into your life, even your angels are inaugurated, not just you. Inauguration means to be placed in a position, a prestigious position uh, to, to be promoted to something that's carrying authority. Your two personal angels do not enter into their ministry until you meet your man of God because they also need the elevation that that man of God carries for them to now minister for you the way that they were supposed to. And so your personal angels, they are eager to get you to your man of God by all means necessary. And they do different methods, strategies, tactics in order to interrupt your life the way it's going to get you to them. Your personal angels are the ones that guide your finger to watch a YouTube and your man of God is on there. Even one of the methods that they get you connected to your man of God is too controversy. Through controversy. Your personal angels are eager to get you to your man of God by all means necessary because they cannot fulfill their ministry without the man of God. Now, let me give you a mystery about your personal angels. You have two when you're first born. They multiply as you submit yourself to God talking to you through a physical body, through someone, another person, just like you. You add to those angels the way that the more you obey, the more you submit yourself. Your personal angels, they actually have losses in the spirit until you meet your man of God. That's why bad things happen to people. And they go through suffering and tough times and bad decisions and, and they get misused and they get abused and they get deceived and they go through relationships and they go through uh, financial lack and they go through bad health and bad mental places and they be tormented mentally. And they lose things and they, their life is stagnated because your personal angels lose battles before you officially submit to your man of God. They lose battles. That means that there are satanic kings that challenge your personal angels and they actually win. Your personal angels will lose wars, battles over and over again until you officially submit to your man of God. And so there are various things that are occurring in the spirit realm, and they're losing. Imagine that. I want to give you another powerful prophetic secret about your personal angels. That your personal angels, they are also under your man of God's mantle. So they need him and they train you and they urgently pull you into that same mindset. You need him. We need him. We can't win. His mantle is what's going to propel us into our ministry. His mantle is what's going to propel us into our fulfillment of our purpose, of our assignment, of our task, of our functionality. So they need your man of God. So they're not in one aspect saying, you know, we can make it. God going to be with us. They're saying, no, no, no. You need to get connected to him. You need to 
Submit to him. You need to sow into him. You need to serve him. You need to watch his videos. You need to listen to his teaching because this is how we get empowered. Your personal angels receive strength when your man of God is teaching you and your eyes is watching it and your ears is listening to it. That's how they receive strength as well. They receive strength when your man of God is talking and your eyes is viewing, your ears is listening. They are being strengthened by the word. Remember, remember they excel in strength, hearkening. You know what hearkening means? To come into the posture of seeing, listening, viewing, concentrating. And hearkening is also the motive to fulfill what you're hearing, to fulfill what you're seeing, to become what you're viewing. That's why I gave you wisdom to us in the past. Whatever you view becomes you. So the, the, the personal angels, the two personal angels you have, they are being strengthened when you are listening to your man of God talk. They are receiving strength, power, energy, and the excitement. And this is why you as a person also become more interested in the way of God, in sanctification, in holiness, in obedience, in godliness, in righteousness. That's why you feel the urge to purge yourself and start making better decisions because you're surrounded by the strength of the word that's coming from your man of God, that impartation. Now, also, I want you to hear this very clearly. When you're listening to your man of God's videos, whether they be past or present, there are specific angels that now come alongside of you and they lodge themselves around you as their habitat, their environment, and their home. There are angels that chill out with you. There are angels that come to do battle for you. This is why Satan doesn't want people connected to the man of God because Satan could do what he wants with you while you're not connected. He, she is going to have a field day over your life because they know uh, all those demon spirits. They know that as long as that man of God is not able to talk to you, get your attention, uh, be over your life, be the authority over you, that they could actually capitalize on a lot of evil agendas against you. Now, what do demons do when you're not in obedience, submission to your man of God? What do they do? Well, those satanic angels, they target your health. They come to wreak havoc on your health, your physical body, so that you won't have good times in your health or that you'll receive diseases. They want to puncture, batter your health. Demons love torturing people's bodies. They love creating hell on earth through your physical bones, your elements, your blood cells. They want to place things on you to terrorize your existence. So before you're, 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 you're in submission and obedience to your man of God serving him, they come to create pain within your body. They are responsible for causing you to have ailments and illnesses and dizziness and um, weakness and fatigue and problems and all type of things that go on in the physical body. They are responsible for intensifying those things so that you can have a hellish experience. Also, what do satanic angels do before you submit and obey your man of God on the earth, your prophet of God? They also target your finances. Remember, your prophet of God is a financial banker. They come to show you how to make withdrawals from your heavenly account. They show you how to live in matchless abundance. Your prophet has money angels around them. So the reason why the prophet of God would talk to you about money because they have invisible men that 
and, and invisible men and women that are a part of the financial move of God on earth. And so that's why they'll talk to you a lot about money because their angels are looking for someone to upgrade that believes the prophet. Now, you know what the Bible says, if you believe the prophet, so shall you prosper because there are prosperity angels around that prophet. And when you believe him and his doctrine, what he's training you, and that's your prophet of God, sent of the Lord to your life. Now they come alongside of you and they start working for you and bringing you into the prosperity that the prophet is talking about. So satanic angels target your finances. And what is their aim to give you difficulty, to shut doors on you, to cause people's hearts to be hardened towards you? And also, let me just tell you something about this. Satanic angels also mentor you to have certain bad ways that are anti-money coming. And so like you'll have a certain mindset, perception, behavior, even your smell. There are certain times people smell so bad that they affect money favor with people because somebody don't want to be around you if you smell funny. And so like before you meet your man of God, those satanic angels will will establish certain mindsets where your hygiene might be bad. Uh, your 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 hair may be undone. You don't know how to put on makeup. You walking around with onion eyes. The girl that's got on makeup is getting all the promotions and you up there telling some you a natural beauty. I got natural beauty. It's natural, all right. It's natural. <laughs> got the hat of got it. It's natural, all right. Those are you and everything. Bam, 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 bam. A baby like man. A baby like man. You'll never find. You'll never find. You up there listening to Drake music. Tell them, uh, 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 uh. Get up, get up, get up. Uh, 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 uh. Get up, get up, get up. Uh, you, uh, get up, uh, you had the, you had the interview tell them, yeah, I could do all this. Yeah, you could do all this. I could do this. Yeah, I could put the files on. I can put the files on the organizer, boss. Yeah, I do all that stuff for you. I come in late, over time, all of that. Boss up there looking at you like, look at this. This is Squid Games. Look at Miss Squid Games in the room. You're never fine. You're never fine. An employee like that. And the, you don't even know what the boss saying to your boss. Like, why? how she going to come in here looking like this here? I want to hire her, but I ain't trying to see this every day. And then how I'm going to tell her that she need to be her face? How I'm going to tell her that? Because she might be offended. And you're up there on the interview. You don't even know what the boss saying. The boss said, I could hire her. She would just be her face. All she need two beats. You be on the phone after you got the interview. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I got it. It went good. I'm just waiting for him to call me. Did you take a picture? Yeah, I took a picture. And that was the worst thing you could do. That picture, when they look at that picture, going like, nah, I, I pass over. So, so satanic angels will have you carry on certain mindsets that keep you broke. They will mentor you like, I ain't, I ain't going to have nobody do that. I, you know, when, when in all actuality, you have to be a people pleaser to get your financial destiny with God, because God is going to use men to give into your bosom. So you're, you're going to have to learn how to deal peaceably with men. If you don't know how to deal peaceably with men, you're not going to prosper the way that God planned because he's going to use men in the, equa the equation. So if you if you hate men, you you d dislike men, you are at odds with men. Imagine that's the means that God picked to bring money to you. All right. Uh, Christy said, I've been wearing makeup since fifth grade. I, I came out the womb putting on makeup. And listen, Christy, I'll get you banged up too. <laughs> 
you when you you're never fine, you're never fine, and employ like dying on your eyes, on your eyes. Since when I was going to school, every pretty girl was bad. They was bad. They were all, all the pretty girls was bad. I remember there was this girl with green eyes when I was, what, three, four years old. She used to come knock the door. He used to tell my mama, she used to tell my mama, can I play with Joshua, please? And, and my, my mother, my mother would talk to the little girl about Jesus. <laughs> my mother was saying that. <laughs> would change that girl about Jesus. Every time that girl come, my mom, my mom would talk to her about Jesus. My mom would tell her, where, you, where your mom at? And see, the girl mama was fast, so her mama wasn't. Uh... And um, here's what's wild. The, the girl mama was fast, so it wasn't taken care of, so the girl was always, you know, just... And saying so one day, one day, my mom was like, "No, uh, and, and, and no, Joshua can't play right now." And one day, I had snuck by the door. <laughs> and at first, I was at odds. I'm like, "I don't want to play. I don't want to play with nobody. I want to be." In and when I saw that girl, I was like, there was two considerations. I was like, "Well, maybe, 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 maybe this is God's doing. Maybe this, this." Maybe this God's doing. Maybe God has brought. Satanic angels bring a mentality that affect your progress in the schedule of God so that you will not receive it. So when, when, when your man of God comes, the, all the evil spirits that have multiplied in your life through the decisions that you were making, they know that their time has come. Listen to me on this. Evil spirits they find safety in knowing that you are blinded and you don't have no help in the spirit realm in the direction of light. Now, you may say, well, prophet, well, well, why? I can listen to God myself, but you don't. Nobody listens to God themselves. You know what you listen to? You listen to your senses. You listen to what makes you feel good and what looks like it will bring you pleasure in the end. This is how everybody functions before they get connected to the man of God. That's why when your man of God comes to you, you will see all the behaviors that you have. You will have arguments with your man of God in your mind, which is really the evil spirits that used to possess that that uh had authority over you before your man of God come, they are the ones embarking on getting you disconnected from him so that they can officially take back full rulership over you. Because there's an avenue of him talking to you and planting light that comes to evict them. If you ever find yourself arguing with your man of God, that's undeniable evidence that you have demons. If you ever find yourself having a whole conversation about why your man of God is wrong and why you're right, that's evidence that you have satanic angels of your past still with a platform to speak to you. Here is a thing that a lot of people do not recognize that before you meet your man of God, you do have evil spirits. You do have evil spirits. That man of God comes so that he could teach you the word and tell you the truth 
so that you could be set free. Watch this here. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Free from what? Free from angels? Free from the anointing? Free from eternal life? What am I being set free from? Sin. Oh, uh, uh, sin. But who are the initiators of sin? Satanic angels. So when they say that you're going to know the word, the word going to set you free. The word is really coming from the preacher, the man that God assigned to you. And what are you being set free from? The evil spirits, the satanic angels that you have accumulated before you ever met your man of God. So let me show you something. The satanic angels, they either know, they know that either you're going to obey your man of God that you have finally met and be free from them. Or you're going to disconnect from your man of God and remain in covenant with them, submission to them. And they are your Lord. They are your kings. They are your God. One or the other has to happen. So every day you wake up, the tug of war is this. You have satanic angels that you already were acquainted with before you met your man of God. You, you didn't just get acquainted with him in 2022. They knew about you in 2016. They knew you in 2013. They knew you in 2008, 2007. They knew you in 1995. They knew you in 1998. They knew you in 1984. They knew you in 1979. So they're not just meeting you. They already knew you. All they do is, they say, let me return back to my house. They come with seven more wicked spirits. And all they do is, they converse with you about your former habits, your former reactions your former words, your former thoughts, your former ways, your former meditations. And they give you encouragement that this is correct. This is who we are. We speak our minds. We don't let anybody walk over us. We know who we are. And they will even bring some scriptures to you. The same way the devil did with Jesus. He will command his angels. He listed Psalm 91. He will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone. And here, this is the devil tempting Jesus. And while the devil is conversing with Jesus, this devil angel is also giving Jesus scriptures with the temptation, with the whole conversation in the lecture, include scriptures in. And the reason why the satanic angels do that, because they know that your concept of the scriptures is that it is right. So what, they are do, what they'll do is they'll tell you wrong and then they'll tell you some scriptures because now you got wrong being overshadowed by right so that you would think that the wrong is right. But it takes a humble person to step back and recognize why would God be having me in this mode? Why would God Come to me to deliver me and then also stir me up that the deliverer is wrong and I'm right. See, only a humble person will step back. A humble person will say, this doesn't make any sense. 
Is it possible that my brain was supposed to be used to help the deliverer? But instead, I'm letting satanic agents have me argue, combat, resist, angry, upset. And now the very thing that's going to solidify the anointing from the man of God to me, I can't do it because I'm playing with the people that used to rule me. I'm giving place to them. They got the microphone. My set time for favor has come where Jesus has given the microphone to himself. And now he's talking to me through a body. And I can't hear him because I'm playing with the spirits that I don't even, I don't even like the results that they bring. I was broke listening to them. I had pain in my body listening to them. I was sick listening to them, had diseases listening to them. People did me wrong listening to them. People betrayed me listening to them. I ended up in relationships that didn't even work out listening to them. I connected with people that didn't even like me listening to them. And now I'm here. I am listening to them. And your brain, the way that it gets delivered is when it takes on your purpose towards your man of God. Divinely, not demonically. When you become. The John and not the Judas. When you become the Esther and not the Vashti. You notice Vashti told the king no. Didn't give any care about how the king felt. But now we have Esther. She went on a three day fast saying I don't want the king to feel like I'm disrespecting him. You see one woman don't care about how the king feel. The other woman do. Esther is all about the feeling. Let's fast so that we don't even look disrespectful. We don't even want the king to misunderstand our approach. We don't want the king to think that we disrespecting his intelligence, but we want him to recognize we just simply protecting him. And we look at the approach systems. We see the purposes that are given when the man of God comes. You could take the evil route or you could take the good route. You could be God in the flesh to the man of God, or you could be Satan in the flesh to the man of God. And, and both of these platforms are available according to what you pick. And when you choose to be God in the flesh to your man of God, every good and perfect plan and schedule is beautifully transmitted to your life. You enjoy it. You, you prosper. You keep on increasing more and more. God starts dealing with your health and restoring health back to you. The Lord starts bringing brilliance and wisdom to your mind. You become a woman and a man that you never knew you could be. You start having thoughts that you never knew you could have. And there is an excellence that you carry in every hostile situation. There's a boldness and there's a presence of God that you walk with, that people will feel a urge to love you when you get around them. They will feel a urge to like you when you're in their presence. And you will have people that will help you simply because they are enveloped in the heavenly realm that you live out of. You can pick the route of evil. And when you pick the route of evil, you simply reconnect yourself to the spirits that ruled you before your man of God came. Before he ever spoke to you, before you saw him, before you heard him teach it. And those spirits will also betray you. Because even when you think that you're connected with friends and associates and people. Those evil spirits will use those same people to hurt you and harm you and sometimes kill you. Because these evil spirits don't like you in the first place. The satanic angels 
that ruled your life and influenced your life before your man of God come, even if they influence your life religiously, because there's evil spirits that take people to go to churches and go to conferences and you, you become a member at that church and there's an evil spirit guiding your path because it's the wrong man of God. And so evil spirits will have you sit underneath that person and, and, and meanwhile you're on the wrong path for your life. And you're already on your way to hell because that path is not God's way. And so the evil spirits don't mind you sitting in the pew, hearing the word being preached every Sunday because you're going to hell anyway. Saints, if people in hell right now could talk to you, there'll be people that will shout to you and say, listen to what he telling you. He not lying. We in hell today. We had a pastor. But our pastor was a disaster. It was a God in the man. We had someone that God had picked to teach us, to train us, but we pick who we wanted. Saints, there's people right now burning in hell that pick their man of God. You don't pick your man of God. God picks your man of God. God sent Moses to the children of Israel. The Israel didn't call for Moses. Tell me one way in the word of God that you see the children of Israel saying, um, Lord, could you send Moses for us? They didn't even know who Moses was. It's God that picked Moses and it's God that sent Moses. Your man of God comes to you. They come and reach for you. That's why when you take on your divine purpose, you'll spend the rest of your time reaching for them. If the man of God still has to reach for you, that just shows that you have chosen the evil part. When you choose the good part, you reach for them. Because they already reach for you through their work, through their visibility, through their time, through their effort, their energy, their bodily strength. They have taken their moments on earth to reach for you. And so when you take on the good part, now you will become love to them. Now, when the man of God, if he ever favors you and uh, gives you some type of accessibility to him, it is not like you're not going to hear those satanic angels whispering to you again. All throughout the course of your life, the angels that used to conduct your life and influence you and your decisions, they are going to seek to talk to you. And when you get into favor, if you're not intentional about being a good person, if you're not intentional about being filled with the Holy Spirit, if you're not intentional about meditating the word and solving the problems in the man of God's life, what you're going to do is you're going to become that man of God's sorrow. Not only will you become his sorrow, but his destroyer. Not only his destroyer, but you'll become his opposition. Now, those satanic angels, when you give yourself over to that, they come right back into your life and the conversations they have with you multiply. Now, this can only happen if you don't give your energy over to the good part, that good thing that was given to you by the Holy Ghost. This can only happen if you don't stay in the face of God. You don't seek his face. This can only happen if you don't value your freedom. This can only happen if you're not thankful. 
This can only happen if you don't praise God. This can only happen if you don't pray and if you don't pray for the man of God. This can only happen if you don't sow none of your money into that man of God. You don't sow nothing into him. He works for your soul. He works for your life. He's consistently caring for you and you don't have no care in your heart for him. Those satanic angels will capitalize on that soulish place that you occupy and they will use that to empower you to be evil towards your man of God. Every deed that you do towards your man of God will be rewarded in heaven. 